Hello, I'm John Morrison, owner of Cornerstone Glassworks. I've been a glass artist for 30 years now, uh, owner of my own company for the last 25 years. What I'd like to do is give you a brief tour of the shop and my little showroom, give you some idea of the uh, essential tools for glass work, and after we're done with that, I would like to do a small demonstration on the power of UV cured adhesives on glass. They're brilliant. Uh, the UV cured adhesives are used on lens work. They're optically pure and practically forever. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, well, as we start uh, looking around the shop here, uh, you can see some of the stuff that I work with. There's my plotter. I use that with the computer. And then I've got my light box over here. And uh, I've got a diffuser box here for photography. My wife shoots a lot of uh, jewelry in that. And let's just mosey out to the back here. Uh, here's a fun piece. This is a piece of sculpture I did a few years ago. Anyway, let's go over here to the sandblasting booth. That's sort of uh, the most important part of the shop here. The booth is 9 foot by 9 foot by 13 foot. The largest thing I can order is 8 by 12 and so it accommodates that size. There's my two pressure pots. The air fed hood to protect my lungs. And of course the light wall which lets me see what I'm carving. And I've got four tables out here. My water tools are all against this wall here. This is a tile saw that's fitted with a diamond blade for cutting glass. And this is a, just a straight traditional wet belt sander. And my 24 inch diameter polishing wheel. This is a 24 inch lap wheel. I'm gonna be demonstrating that a little later. And then our more traditional beveling tools. The steel and stone wool for shaping and smoothing. And then the uh, felt and cork wheel for polishing. Now that just gives you an idea of what the shop looks like and how big it is. This building is 37 by 50 foot. Really, it's just barely big enough for me to squeeze all this into. But we get a lot done here. There's my kiln and my bandsaw. This station over here is where I make photo resist. I take my, uh, my uh, photosensitive film, expose it in the light unit. This is the cover for it. And once it's exposed, I take it here to the washout station and rinse out the details. And once that's done, I bring it over here to the dryer. And then we put the film here, let it dry, and once it's uh, dry enough and ready to adhere to the glass, we take it out and stick it on, and that's that. So, that gives you some idea of what my work environment is like. Uh, why don't we go inside and look in my sample room? All right, now we're starting to enter the sample room. This is uh, where I've got swatches and samples and uh, various experiments in glass to see what might work for a particular project. And uh, let's see some of the items we have here. Here we've got some mirror samples that we've. Uh, tried a few things with to see what might work for a particular job. Then we have some carved components here. My wife does jewelry and glass and this is some of some of her stuff. Then we got photographs here and we got some more carved samples, etched samples, uh, color treatments, things like that. 
just all kinds of things that can be done. And of course, my art library. And, uh, in 30 years of working in glass, I've been very lucky to have won uh, some awards here and there. And here's some more. I don't know if I turn this on or not, but I'm going to try and see what happens. Okay. Typically music comes out of here, but I turned the CD player off. But normally when I turn it on, the music will come out at the same time. But anyway, that's just some of the fun. Oh, and right over here, got a little display with some of my robots in there. And that's me. In the mirror. Hello. Now we're going to do a little uh, demonstration of the UV glues that we use. Uh, this is my favorite Loctite. There are several companies that make the UV cured adhesives. Uh, this is the same recipe in a different size bottle. Um, basically, to start off with, you want to clean your glass naturally. First, I'm going to glue this glass hemisphere to this piece of glass right here. Then I'm going to glue a couple of these things up. You've got to make sure it's clean. This is just some old scrap that I had left over. Uh, one thing about these glues, they will not fill. You have to have true flat to true flat surface. If you've got puddles or areas that are allowing uh, glue to not be pressed flat, it will generate little bubbles in there and it can look kind of weird, mess up your result. So to start off with, I'm just going to take a dab of this glue, put it right there, just a little dot, then I'm going to set my glass hemisphere on it. Now that immediately spread out and filled that whole surface. Now I'm going to expose it to UV light. Now almost any kind of UV generating light bulb will work. Uh, even black lights for black light posters and things like that, that'll work too. Now, in the early days of me working with the UV cured adhesives, I would just set up a table right next to my garage door. So I would get everything set up the way I wanted, get the glue applied, get everything positioned, then roll up the garage door, let it cure for a minute and a half, then roll the garage door back down, clean up, and start my next gluing procedure. So, even if you can't afford something as simple as a UV source, um, you can still use the sunlight and keep working. But um, this stuff sets up in about a minute, cures up. The uh, glue is used in lens work. It's optically pure and holds like a champ. Now we're going to let this just uh, sit here another minute. And you can kind of see that you don't really see glue. The only glue that you'll see is anything that warps out the sides that would be left over from uh, uh, you know your excess. Now that I believe this is set up I want to set this light aside and then I want to tap on it with this hammer and see just how hard I have to hit before it comes loose. Now one thing I want to hold this up close I hope you can see it is it has pulled glass loose from the hemisphere. The glue held so tightly that when I finally hammered it off, it literally pulled glass loose from one side and the other. So that's what you see here. You see glass that used to belong to this piece stuck here and glass that used to belong to this piece stuck here. So anyway, let's do this one more time using a larger piece of glass. Well. Got to turn away my light source there until I get set up. So I run a bead. This is just some junk scrap left over that I've had. Set it down. Now I'm going to bring my light source back over here. 
interesting thing about this glue is while it's setting up it's kind of slick and greasy so you either want to put some registration marks with tape for positioning or just really keep a close eye on it because you can take your hand off of it and then it just kind of shift a little bit as it's sliding and uh, anyway so that's got a little indirect now I'm going to put it in there more directly And again, it only takes about a minute or two. Now, this glue does have a shelf life. And uh, if you keep it for too long, you can still use it to glue, but it won't be as pretty a finish. And so you don't want to use it to adhere things that you can see through. Like sometimes if I'm gluing a, a black hemisphere to a piece of glass, you know, it's really not going to show that much. In fact, just for the fun of it, while that's curing up, I'm going to want to glue this black hemisphere down. Just a dollar. Now, you don't have to sit there and hold things like this. I'm just doing it to uh, speed up the process a little bit. Okay, that's probably done. I'm going to set this over here and just let it continue to cure up. Okay. Now, this is really on there. Now, I can knock it off with a hammer, but once again, it's going to demonstrate how well it actually glued up. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. This thing broke. This is original glass on this surface here. It's still glued down. It's just shattered. That's how good this glue is. Okay. I'm going to try to give you a closer view of what actually happened here when we broke that glass. It's easier to see on the big chunk. From here on up is this piece of glass that it was stuck to. So that when the glass shattered, the surface that was bonded together here actually survived the attack. So that all of this glass from here up belonged to this one. So it didn't even break on the joint itself. Now, to a smaller scale, that happened here. Don't know if you can see it or not. But there is some original glass here which used to belong to the black hemisphere and there are some little pieces of glass here that used to belong to the clear hemisphere and vice versa. Anyway, hopefully that gives you a better idea of what happened. Okay. Just for the record, uh, this little piece here is two pieces of three quarter inch glass that I laminated together using the glue. And once I had my block shape glued together, I took it to the lap wheel which we saw earlier and I ground the shape, putting a bull nose edge on, on the two edges, and then smoothed it and then took it to a polish. So here you can see that you can even glue two pieces of glass up, and if you get a good enough finish on it, you can't even tell that it's two pieces. It looks like one piece in a best case scenario. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about uh, the UV glue or anything else that you saw in the video, please feel free to write, and I'll be happy to respond. Uh, until next time, thank you very much.